Welcome, guys. So uh, today, let's keep talking about the uh, category theory. Okay, so uh, start from here that the category theory uh, will become uh, um, harder and harder. Okay, so in this video, let's talk about cones and cocoons. Okay, and then we will also talk about the uh, co-limit and the limit. Okay, so up to start from here that uh, we will start some uh, a little bit abstract things. Okay, so let's go in your definition. So definition is called a shape. Okay, so diagram of shape. Okay, so this idea is the first abstract things that uh, a little bit hard to understand. So uh, idea is that J be an index category. Okay, so you can view index category just uh, uh, there's a, some integer, right? There, there's a basic subset of integer, but there's an arrow. So for example, you can say one, two, three. Okay, so this is just some element. So basically, uh, this is just some category. So basically, it's index category just means that you can index something. And uh, but uh, there is an error. Okay, and uh, there is a functor from index category to C to the category C. This is called a diagram. Okay, so somehow it's hard to understand what's going on. Okay, so it's may maybe uh, let's do some uh, do a little uh, do a example. Okay. Uh, so for example, uh, so let's say example. Uh, yeah, so basically, uh, let's say, so an example is that, uh, uh, suppose you have A and B, right? So if, if, if you have category C and you pick two objects, let's say A and B be the object of this, you just put A and B and, the, and the, there's no arrow here. Then you can say that all oh, these A and B are basically the, uh, just one, just just one type of diagram, and also if you have a uh, keep go, if you have the index from a zero to a one a and up to keep going, this is also a index. Uh, this is also a diagram. If you have a b c, this is also a diagram. So any type of diagram can be viewed as an index category and function. So basically, uh, you can forget about definition. You just view this as some type, uh, some special type of diagram. Okay. Okay, so uh, once you have this diagram idea that uh, that uh, we one can uh, construct a cone. Okay, so a cone to a diagram J. So remember that the diagram uh, contains some contains an index, right? So many that means uh, in diagram you can say C I C J, which each C I and C J are both small diagrams. So these are diagram. Okay. So a cone, well, so what is a cone, right? The cone means that uh, for each for each object, right? You need to uh, so for a cone is an object is an object in uh, category C. Let's call it the curly C, and the arrow. Okay, so the arrow from uh, from C to C I. So basically, for each. Uh, let's call it small. Let's call it uh, yeah. So this is a bad notation. Yeah, let's call it this x i and x j. Okay, and then this is called c i. So basically, for for each x i diagram, x i type x the x diagram labeled by i, you can construct a c i. Okay. So from uh yeah. So this is so this let's call it objects the uh, large c. R c. Uh, this is uh, c. Such that, uh, such that what? So such that uh, if you see you have x j, x i right by an arrow, then you will have some arrow called s alpha, and your c will be here. Okay, so basically these arrows for each i are fixed. So make this diagram commute are called. Uh, basically, this is called cone. Okay, so this is a cone. So cone means that uh, for each object. In such diagram, you are you are uh, you are worried about or you care about, you can construct morphism and sending the object to such diagram. Okay. Okay. So let's talk about example. Uh, otherwise, that uh, nobody understand what, what I'm talking about. Okay. So one thing is uh, called product. So product means that uh, if somebody give you a diagram A and B, a product means that uh, the the product is an object, right? Called P. Uh, 
uh, from uh, this P and you need to define a two map right, from pi one, called pi one and pi two. Okay, such that if you have any other object X, if you have any object X contains the this two map, let's say this is X one and X two, then uh, there's unique uh, morphism from X to P. This is the definition of product. Okay, so if you uh, if you forget about uh, this this type, you only say that if I only give a B and I working with such such diagram, then uh, I can say that P is a cocon, uh, so P is a cone, right? Because P sending P is object sending out arrows to A A and B. Yeah, so yeah, for so in the products, my diagram is just two objects A and B, and this P is just a, a replace a C here, so P is just a cone. Okay. Okay, so uh, that we can define a cone. Uh, we can define a cone. We can define a cone category, right? So uh, this is should be a, a diagram, right? So let's say diagram. So given a set of di, given a type of diagram, you can define a cone category. So cone category basically is uh, so each cone, right? Each cone contains the object C and the set of morphisms C J, and another cone contains the C prime and the C J prime. So such that, uh, and then there is a morphism, right? You need to define morphism. So what's morphism? Morphism means that uh, let's call it morphism theta. So such that if you have C map to C prime, right? This is the morphism, and uh, this is C J X J, and then you get C J prime. Okay. So such that this diagram commutes. Okay. I hope I'll, I hope you guys understand what I'm talking about. <laughs> so what's so cone means that uh, so for each each i and j right makes these small diagram commutes are called cone are called cone and if so each two cones you can define morphism right the morphism means that from uh, c to c prime there's a map and the cj and cj prime are x so basically you the cone means the the core morphism means that all the theta are such that these small diagram commutes okay and uh, this will form the category okay so called cone category Okay, so the dual the dualized idea, so dualized idea are, is called a cocon, cocon. Okay, so cocon is also uh, obviously right. So if you have a set of x j and x i, and then there's a morphism, then right, then you can you the cocon means that uh, for there is a is this object which absorb all the arrows. So let's say this is c j c j and c i. Okay, so this is this C and the, all these arrows is called just cocon, cocon. Okay, and then you can define a cocon category, cocon category. So basically, for each C, uh, you can so this is this. Uh, so for each J, you can send out a map. Okay, so this is a cocon. Okay, so you see the cocon is the same as cone, just reverse all the arrows. So this is the idea of the dualization. So dualize, dualize means that uh, change all the arrow, change the arrow direction. Okay, so this is cocon category and the cocon. Okay. Okay, so from here that uh, we already know what's cone and cocon, right? So Basically, for given diagram, you can define a cone and cocon. Okay, so from here, let's uh, let's define the limit and the co-limit. Okay, so who's, this is very uh, abstract idea, right? If you learn about the group theory, then maybe you know something about limit and co-limit. Okay, so let's see. So let's let me just give you an answer. So let's def definition. So definition, what is a limit? A right? limit is just a is just a so basically, if you if I give you a diagram which is some functor from so-called index category to category C, then limit just a terminal object in cone. Okay. So basically, given a cone, right? You, you can construct so-called cone category. So the cone category, the terminal object of in the cone category is basically the limit. Okay, so you can dualize dualize the idea. So this become co-limit. It's just a initial object. Okay, so everyone knows about initial object, right? I I, I think in the second video that uh, I presented what's initial object. 
basically it's initial object in a cocoon. Okay, so this is a definition. Yeah, just dualize idea. Okay, and uh, there are uniqueness. Okay, and the proof is just trivial. Right, the proof is trivial since the universal property of terminal and initial object are up to isomorphism. So initial and the terminal is unique up to isomorphism. Okay, because the term, uh, I think very easy to prove, right? The terminal object, the terminal object means that there is only one arrow sent to that. And the initial object means that there's a uh, only one arrow sent out from that object, right? So simple, uh, simple uh, exercise you can check that this is this are up to isomorphs. Okay, so uh, from uh, if it, okay, so if you have a cone and cocoon idea, then the, you it will be very easy for you to uh, construct a lots of things like co product co product. Mm -hmm. And the push out, uh, push, uh, push out, or somehow like uh, that kind of things. Okay, so uh, before uh, we finish, let's talk about zip. Okay, so finally, let's talk about the real limit and the inverse limit. Okay, so somehow uh, we already have the we already I have an idea of the limit and co limit, right? So uh, define a direct limit should not be difficult. Okay, so let's define a. Okay, let's divide diagram. So, so my diagram is choosing to be omega, which is just the integer and the uh, less or equal. Uh, yeah. Okay, so basically our category, uh, our our diagram looks like this. So basically, in the category sense, that uh, we have this. Okay, and this is there's a map, right? So or the morphism. Okay, keep going. This a two. Okay, so I define the direct limit so basically the direct limit is just a limit in this diagram in this diagram okay so that means uh that means uh so remember a limit limit means that the uh, issues limit means that uh, what so if you we go back to the previous so the limit so limit means that uh, you should start from your some object which sent out to be the sent out to the object. Okay. So the limit should be something here, right? So let's call this is limit. So that's so the usual notation is that a n, right? So this is that's called a infinity. So a, a infinity should put it here, right? And then you should send out a lot of the map. I should. Uh, So you should everyone should send uh send it right so everyone should everyone should send send it in uh yeah i think everyone should yeah everyone should send in okay so i should say uh lib direct limit is a co-limit in this diagram okay so sorry about this so i should say this right so send this Okay, so basically you, you need to construct the map called UN from AN to A infinity. Okay, such that this diagram commutes, right? So if you see carefully, that means uh, UN plus one, AN should be uh, UN right, for each one. So this is a universal property. Okay, so yeah, so let's talk about example. So example, uh, so in a group that uh, you can check, you can prove that uh, this is always exists. Okay, so it's it's not necessary that each category should have the should each that each category should have the inverse limit and the, or the direct so called this direct limit. Okay, but the groups is exist. So uh, one diff, one uh, example is that uh, if you start from a finite field. Okay, such that uh, your n zero uh, must be n one. So n zero uh, must divide n one and n one divides n two. Keep going. And the, the final, the, the limit will be the algebraic closure, algebraic closure, a closure, uh, closure of finite field. Okay, so let's define a inverse limit. 
Okay, so limit limit should be a limit, right? Just a limit of this diagram. So let's say you have a diagram to just start from this. Right, so just dualization, I still the, so the same technique, right? Dualize, just reverse all arrows. So this is A0, okay, so this is A0, A1. Okay, so A infinity should be here, right? So this is the, you. this is the limit. And uh, you need to construct this one, send out to send out to this guy, this guy, right? So, right. So you need to construct a U n from a infinity sent to uh, a n, such that uh, U n a n plus one equals to a n. Okay, because they need to uh, commute with all these type. Okay. And uh, usually people write this inverse limit, so it goes the left left way, called a n, called U a infinity. Okay, so this is the inverse limit. Okay, and the common example is that uh, you start from z p mod p z, z p uh p squared z, z p cube z. Okay, so this is the so this is the abelian. This is the field, right? Mod, which is a modulo p square, right? So you can modulo p square can map to modulo p. I right? just 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 do this, right? If you have the Okay, so let's maybe see p equals three, right? You can get the zero, one, two, up three, four, up to eight, right? So you can, this just mapped mass three. So you map to zero, map to one, map to uh, two, map to zero, map to one, map to two, and then map to zero, map to one, and map to two, yeah. So, so you can, uh, so from, if you can only care about the ma p squared, then you can map into ma p, uh, ma, ma, ma p cube, can map to ma p squared, right? So you can, so this there's a so this is just the natural, just the natural inclusion map. Okay, and uh, you can talk about the inverse limit. Okay, so so this inverse limit means that uh, you should have a number you a representation which is a uh, always consistent of this uh always consistent with this choice, right? So basically, you have a lot of numbers which a lot of issue you you should view as the Inverse limit basically is you can choose number here, you choose number here, you choose number here, but they are all what? They are all consistent with this choice. And this is exactly, exactly called the p-acti number, right? So, or basically p-acti integer. Okay, so this is a definition of the p-acti integers, but uh, this should uh, co coincide with the your usual definition or your usual understanding of the, uh, yeah. Yeah, basically, yeah. Okay, that's it. Uh, so now we have the Kong and Kong idea. So we should be able to define a product and a co-product and the equalizer and co-equalizer. And the basically a lot of uh, push, pull back and push out. So they are basically the special type of Kong and Kong. Okay, or the co-limit and co-limit. Okay, so I think the limit and co-limit are very important idea. Okay, see you guys uh, next videos.